This month's special feature webinar will focus on chemical data types and severity thresholds that are available for you in ChemResponder. So the first piece here is to understand the roles and permissions that are needed to carry out these actions that we're going to go through. And uh, we're going to start with the chemical data types. So I'm just going to give an overview of the different chemical data types that we've got in ChemResponder. And, you know, this will be very familiar for those of you that have used RAD Responder in the past, but the data collector and data viewer roles. Those are the roles that you need in the event in order to collect data records, any data record for that matter, obviously including, including the chemical data types. So your responders or whomever is, is collecting chemical data types in the event, you just need to make sure that they've got that data collector role. We have five different chemical data types in ChemResponder. Uh, again, these are uh, data types that are specific to chemical incident response. So um, if your event is in, uh, enabled for the chemical hazard type, you'll have these five different data types available. Chemical reading spectra, ID, color and metric reading, and then the chemical sit reps. So I'll, I'll touch on each of these a little bit. We're gonna spend the most time in that first one, the chemical reading data type, because for one, I think it's gonna be the, the most commonly used data type that users will interact with, and it's a little bit more involved than the others, so I think it warrants uh, some, some more treatment. So any of these data types can be collected on either the website or from the mobile application. So, you know, I, I think this will be familiar for a lot of folks on the line, but again, we, we have a mobile application that's available on iOS, Android, and Windows devices. That mobile application is primarily uh, used for data collection. It does have some basic situational awareness features too, like an event map, but to make sure that everyone is aware of that, that you can do data collection using both the website and the mobile application. Now today, I'm gonna to be doing the demo um, from the website. I'm not gonna go into the mobile app, uh, mostly for the sake of time, but uh, it's basically the, the same thing. All the same principles apply. All the fields are the same, uh, regardless of whether you're on the mobile application or the website uh, when it comes to collecting data. There are four basic steps, regardless of which data type that you're gonna be using. There's kind of a pre-work step here, if you will, which is uploading our equipment, uh, again, this is going to be quite familiar for those of you who have been longtime RAD responder users. You're familiar with the equipment inventory capability. Largely the same. Uh, there are, of course, some nuances, some differences when it comes to your chemical detection equipment, uh, particularly your multi-gas meters. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So we get our equipment uploaded in ChemResponder, and then we have at our disposal, again, these different data, data types. Uh, each of them has a create form, as we call it. So you'll, I'll show you where you, know, you can access the different create forms for your different data types. And when we're in the create form, creating our data records, we'll add our values. Obviously these are gonna be different depending on the data type that you are using. And then when we've filled those fields out, save our changes and we're all set. This is a snapshot from our equipment inventory in ChemResponder. And so right now we're in the organization space and you know, on the side navigation, you see that I'm selected into uh, my equipment page. And, uh, you know, this is a, the, the equipment inventory capability is something that we've uh, heard a lot of feedback from from folks. They find it really handy, um, you know, particularly, you know, fire departments and first responders, I think, really find it useful. Uh, you know, they may just, uh, you know, be otherwise they might be managing this equipment list on an Excel sheet, getting passed around uh, on desktops. Uh, this is obviously a cloud hosting capability where they can manage all kinds of information uh, about each of their instruments and share it with partners. Kind of in gen generally speaking, there's a lot of different use for the equipment inventory capability. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of briefly touch on how we add equipment, specifically how we add a multi-gas meter and how that's gonna play into uh, what happens when we create chemical reading records. So in that, uh, in the upper right corner, let me back up for a second. In the upper right corner of your equipment inventory page, you're going to have a couple buttons where we can start to add our equipment. And so there is this import equipment button, this white one, and that's going to allow you to use a spreadsheet. If you want to uh, bulk upload a bunch of instruments at once, that's a great way to do it. Uh, the green drop down button here, uh, just to its right, gives you a few different options for opening a form, a web form that will allow you to add 
uh, a single instrument at a time. I'm not going to delve into the bulk import option, but I just want to touch on how you'd add a multi-gas meter using this web form. I'm going to create a, a new instrument here in my equipment inventory. When I add a new instrument, it's going to pull up the form that looks like this. We see some fields that are going to be required uh, with that red asterisk, so we know we need to fill those out. Basic stuff, you know, I enter my manufacturer, the model, the serial number, um, so I think that's fairly straightforward. Uh, as you go down, uh, the critical piece that I want to make sure I'm pointing out for you all is the equipment types at the bottom here. I think it's especially relevant for your multi-gas meters again. So if I'm uploading just a, my, my multi-gas meter, obviously I'm just going to use, I can use that three gas meter, or four gas meter. Uh, there is a, a multi-gas meter type. I'm going to pick one of those. If I'm uploading a particular sensor, I'm going to, you know, an ammonia sensor, for instance, a carbon monoxide sensor. I want to make sure I select that type. So that is a, a critical piece here. Uh, it's going to allow you to add sensors basically to your multi-gas detectors again and that's an important piece for creating chemical reading records uh, and this is also going to play into the severity threshold so that's a big part of the reason why i wanted to talk about this a little bit now basically we are in order to colorize data records according to their severity thresholds on the event map um, we are looking at the type of sensor that is collecting data uh, and it's of course its value the concentration value of the reading so more about that later. But again, uh, just in general here, it's, it's important that you are typing the sensors uh, appropriately. So after I've added my multi-gas uh, detector, my multi-gas meter, it's in my equipment inventory. Um, here I've just uh, I've just created a generic multi-gas meter as I'm calling it, this is notional equipment, obviously. And I'm gonna go to the details uh, for that generic multi-gas meter into the details page of a clicking on that little magnifying glass. And when I'm looking at the details for that multi-gas meter, you're going to scroll down and there is an assigned sensors section. And it'll show you some sensors that have been assigned to this multi-gas. And in the upper right corner of that table, you've got this manage button. And that's where we can go in and assign additional sensors or remove sensors. So when I go to that manage button, it brings me to this screen where again, this is where I am adding sensors that are on board this multi-gas meter. Um, so you can see here the interface allows you to, you've got that green add equipment button. Um, that's where you can draw from the other sensors, from whatever sensors you've uploaded in your equipment inventory. And obviously remove sensors that are on there now if I need to do that. Um, so again, this is just where I'm, I'm, I'm assigning all those sensors that are on board that, that multi-gas. Um, I'm assigning those to the multi-gas in chem responder here. When you are creating a chemical reading record, again, I'm doing this, demoing this from the website here. My screenshots are from the website, but again, it works the same way if you're using the mobile application, same principle. Um, I'm opening my data drop down on the side navigation. I go to my chemical reading data type. And in the upper right hand corner, I've got my green create chemical reading uh, button. So I'm going to go to that create form. One of the first sections that I'm going to see is reading information and it's going to ask me what is the gas meter I'm using. So again, I'm just going to pick, okay, I'm using this multi gas meter. Um, in this case, my, my quote unquote generic multi gas meter uh, that I've created for my demo organization here. So I'm going to select my generic multi gas meter. And then in the section right below that, you're going to see that the sensors are going to automatically populate there for you, whatever sensors that you've assigned to that multi-gas meter. So again, that's why that equipment inventory piece we just went through is important. Now we get our sensors that pop up here, and we can go in and fill out those values uh, appropriately. A couple words about these two different columns you're seeing here. So obviously, you know, we have on the left here the name of the sensor. So if this is, you know, uh, pretty basic stuff. I've got my carbon monoxide, my hydrogen sulfide, I've got an LEL, an oxygen sensor. And I've got the, the sensor ranges that we have indicated for each of these sensors. And I've got a displayed concentration column and a measured concentration column. So uh, 
the displayed concentration column that's meant to be literally what what is the what is the uh, meter saying on the interface right what are the readings that i'm seeing when i look down at it the measured concentration column is there in case you need to apply correction factors um, so if you know that you need to correct you know your uh, hydrogen sulfide measurement for example if something else in the air that's just cross sensitive with uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, and you need to apply a correction factor to that you can do so now none of these measured concentration fields are required obviously so in feedback that we've we've gotten from a lot of first responders and the, and the requirements writing for this they said you know this might be something we would go in and do retroactively um, so if we've got a responder out in the field they're just entering some data again they're just going to worry about this displayed concentration field probably just, again what is what is my meter telling me uh, and then somebody else who's interacting with the event, uh, maybe they go in and indicate a, a measured concentration after applying, after doing that map and applying the correction factor. Um, but just to, uh, wanted to elucidate kind of what that is, that measured concentration column. So that's uh, the short and long of our chemical reading data type. Again, I'll demo this so you can see a little bit more of it in a little bit here. Um, just want to hit briefly on the other data types that are at your disposal. Um, again, they basically all function in the same way. So I've got that uh, data drop down um, in the event space. One of the other data types that's available is the chemical spectrum form. So I go into my create form. It's obviously asking me for fields that are different from our chemical reading form for obvious reasons. So um, we're taking a different type of measurement here. Um, so it's going to, it'll also ask me to pick uh, the equipment that I'm using. Uh, the equipment that I've uploaded in my equipment inventory. Uh, I have the option to add a data file. So if your spectroscopic equipment uh, can export some data file that you want to include in the record here, you can upload that. Uh, it'll ask me some qualitative questions about uh, the substance I'm, I'm shooting, that I'm measuring. You know, what color is it? Is it in a container? Um, does it have an odor? Um, None of these fields are required. Uh, you can uh, answer them if it's, uh, you think it's helpful or appropriate. Uh, a lot of these fields that we added here uh, came from feedback we got, again, from first responders as well as manufacturers who are trying to pursue this idea of potentially using ChemResponder for some reachback support. So if they are able to house basically their chemical spectrum records that they're collecting for a particular response, and they need some reach back support from a manufacturer uh, or some other analyst. Uh, that analyst, that reach back support can come into the ChemResponder event and they'll have in these different fields a lot of the information that they'd be interested in knowing as they're trying to identify uh, the chemical in question. Um, so they'd want to know, obviously, things like is it in a container? What color is that? Et cetera. Um, so that's the rationale there for having some of those fields. Um, we've got a colorimetric reading data type as well, uh, and so this allows you, this is fairly straightforward, I can go in, select the, the paper type I'm using, uh, indicate a value depending on uh, the paper type. And then I've got a chemical sit rep. Uh, this is the last chemical data type, um, and so this one um, is basically as it sounds. So I can go in and enter kind of general information about the situation. Uh, I can enter uh, kind of weather data, can enter kind of any medical impact, what happened with uh, any, any responders or members of the public who were affected. Uh, and then there's just these free, free text fields for some additional narrative that are here for you as well. When I'm talking about thresholds, I'm talking about ways of indicating the severity of the reading basically on the event map. So you can see on my picture here of a, a demo event, that I'll show you in a minute. We've got uh, some chemical readings that have been taken and uploaded in this event space on a map, and uh, they're colorized according to their severity. Uh, and so the red one, obviously, uh, there's something bad there. So there's some uh, chemical we've measured that's at a high severity, that's exceeding that high severity threshold more specifically. The yellow one has be exceeded our medium threshold, et cetera. Um, so I'll show you how that works in a bit here. So to create thresholds, to manage and change thresholds at the event level, you need the event manager permission. So this is the highest level of permission that somebody can have in an event. 
Um, you can also create threshold steps at the organizational level. Uh, I'm not going to delve too much into that today, but just wanted to point that out that it's available there for you. So if you want to save uh, a particular set of thresholds, depending on the incident you're dealing with, um, you can, again, create these threshold sets at the org level that you can swiftly carry down into the event. Um, so at the org level, you need that administrator or plan of privilege. Again, these are very high level permissions in the org space. Um, so you need one of those roles to be able to, to manage, to change, to remove uh, threshold sets. So our thresholds are going to be, again, on that left side. And when, when we're in the event space, on the left side on that side navigation, at the very bottom of that list, you're going to see the threshold menu. And the threshold menu is going to show you the different data types for which you can create and edit thresholds. And so in chemical, in a chem responder, that's going to be these two data types you see here. So we can create thresholds for our chemical reading data type, uh, as well as our chemical identification data type. I realize I didn't uh, say much about the chemical ID data type earlier. I'll come back to that uh, as we talk through thresholds here. But I'm going to treat first this chemical reading threshold, this data type we uh, just got done talking about a little bit. So when you're in the thresholds menu, again, we're just going to, uh, going to click on that magnifying glass next to our, our chemical reading thresholds. And we'll get a details page. And in the top, you're going to have a, an edit button. Again, if you are in the event, an event manager, you're going to have that edit button. If you don't have that role, you're not going to see that at all. So you won't have that edit button at your disposal. It just won't appear. And then we've got the thresholds themselves. And you're going to see here in this threshold box that um, what I've got is a column for sensor type. And then obviously the severities where I can key in um, the values for how I want to define these severities. So the sensor type, again, this is relevant to what we just talked about in terms of when we upload equipment into our equipment inventory, when we colorize the data records on the event map, we're looking at, okay, what's the type of sensor that's getting used here? And then obviously, what's its value with respect to these severities, which, which threshold, severity threshold is it exceeding here? So we're going to colorize that data record. So that's, a, again, why it's important in order to take advantage of the chemical reading data type and, and the threshold is important that we're typing our equipment appropriately uh, when we're uploading it into that equipment inventory. So in this event, I've got a carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, LEL, uh, and an oxygen sensor threshold defined. Right here, so here, so I, I will note that when I do the demo, you can do um, they, uh, basically thresholds for oxygen deprived environments as well as oxygen enriched environments. So you can set up here, we've got an uh, oxygen deprived environment. So we've got a threshold that starts at 20.9 and goes down. Uh, but I could also create a separate threshold for oxygen enriched um, that would go in the other direction. So in that threshold uh, grid there that we just looked at on the right side of that header, uh, again, if you're an event manager, uh, you're going to have this add threshold option for your chemical reading data type, chemical reading thresholds. It'll give you a little dialog box here and it'll allow you to add sensors to define additional thresholds. So again, uh, these are all according to the, the sensor type. So I could go in and, you know, if I wanted to add an ammonia sensor threshold, for instance, I would just search for that threshold or that sensor type here, and I would choose the concentration units. This inverted scale, again, that's, we did that primarily for the sake of oxygen sensors, but typically, you know, for, for things like ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, et cetera, uh, you're not gonna use that inverted scale. All right, chemical ID threshold. So again, um, the, the chemical ID data type is basically just asks you for the name of the chemical and its concentration. So it's not um, asking you for uh, sensor types, basically. So we're, we're still kind of curious. The, the chemical ID data type was in the original chem responder requirements and it's a kind of version 1.0. We weren't sure if folks were gonna make use of it or not, if it would have any relevance or utility alongside that chemical reading data type, which we talked more about. Um, so our, our initial thinking was like, okay, if responders want to be able to indicate that, you know, we have, um, we have affirmed that we, de we definitely know what this chemical is and we know what its concentration is, um, we're going to use this chemical ID data type as opposed to the chemical reading data type to indicate that. Um, but, you know, again, we're kind of waiting for some use, ca use cases to materialize. 
Um, if this ends up not being useful at all for folks with additional chemical ID data type and it's uh, redundant or just not nearly as, as purposeful as the chemical reading data type, we could hide it, we could remove it um, to just food for thought. But um, again, similar concept. This time I'm defining the threshold not by the sensor type, but, but just by the chemical name. So here I'm providing two chemicals to two different thresholds here, carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide. Uh, and then again, I'm just, uh, I've got my different values for the different thresholds. And again, the point of, uh, a big point of this is that we can colorize our data records on our event map. Um, so when we set these up, uh, they'll colorize appropriately depending on the threshold that they're exceeding. Very good. I'm at the ChemResponder homepage here. I've just logged in. Uh, so this is post authentication we're looking at. I'm going to just quickly jump over to the organization space. Again, I pointed out earlier that we've got the equipment page here on the side navigation. And we talked about how we can add instruments here. We can go to our add equipment in the upper right, uh, go to create new, and we fill out this form uh, to add our sensors. We talked about the importance of typing our equipment appropriately. So we add these tags to it. That's what you're seeing at the bottom. So again, maybe I've got a uh, carbon monoxide sensor that I'm gonna add. You'll notice that when I add the equipment type, that's going to open up some additional fields at the bottom here, uh, depending on the type of, uh, uh, of tag that I've chosen. So I can enter the range, uh, calibration gas, the temperature range, these fields are optional, um, so I think best practice to fill them out, but uh, you don't have to to be able to save the form. And then just to point out again, we had our uh, we have our generic multi gas meter that we've created, and I go into the details for that multi gas, and I've got this assigned sensors section that I'll open up. We can view the sensors that we've assigned that are on board uh, this multi-gas meter. Here's the manage button. Um, uh, something I should have noted earlier, you will only see this if you are an administrator or an equipment manager for your organization. Um, so you need those roles to have that manage button, which would explain, uh, if you're not seeing it, that, that would explain why. Click manage. Again, we saw this interface on the slide. So here I can remove sensors, I can add new sensors. This is just searching across all the equipment that's in my inventory that has a sensor tag on it. So you can see here the, the different tags that have been applied. Um, so I can add you know, X number of sensors in addition to what I've already got if, if I need to. All right, so that's our equipment inventory in the org space. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to the event space. So in ChemResponder, typically we create unique events for a given response. We have a facility fire. You know, we usually create a unique event for that and put our event data, our response data uh, in that event. I've got my drop down data button here on the left. So this is exposing all of the different data types that I've got for this event. So we talked about our chemical reading data type that's here for me, like that. I'm able to view the records I've created up to now in a table format. Uh, obviously, I can see the different sensor readings that we've got for each of our multi-gas readings here. Here's my green create chemical reading button in the upper right. This is the web form that we saw earlier. So I start by choosing the organization. And we pick our location wherever we're uh, collecting this data from. Now again, typically, I think users are gonna be using the mobile application to do this, and they can take advantage of the current location mode on the, on the mobile application. So they're just able to use wherever they are currently standing as their location, so they don't need to, they don't need to manually enter that. Um, but again, the, all the fields are the same here, whether you're on the web uh, website of the mobile application. Here's where I'm selecting my gas meter. Notice I selected that gas meter, and now again, all these sensors auto populate for me, and I can enter that uh, information. Now, um, one of the reasons that at the end here, I'm gonna talk about our APIs, because if some of you are, are reacting for, for not unfair reasons, that hey, this is kind of a lot to, to be hand jamming, be it uh, if I'm entering it into a phone or on the website here, it's a lot to manually enter. 
purpose for those APIs is to allow detection equipment to communicate directly with chem responder to autonomously telemeter data points from the instrument directly into your event here. All right, but again, I would just fill out my values here for my different sensors. And then I'd save this. I'm not gonna do that in this case, but so that's our chemical reading form. Uh, again, then we've got our, our spectra form. Again, very similar principle here. Uh, I've got my green create chemical spectrum uh, in the upper right corner. Same basic fields at the top. Enter my location, date and time it was collected. The fields reflect what we, again, we saw earlier on the PowerPoint, so I can select my instrument. I think I've got a, I don't know if you've got some sort of spectroscopic equipment you're using. Again, data, a data file option. So if your spectrometer is, is, is outputting, uh, there, there are kind of different formats out there, but maybe a CSV or an SPC file or even a PDF, some of them do. But you can include that here. Again, all these qualitative fields that we can fill out um, optionally, none of them are required. Fill out whatever makes sense to fill out. Uh, at the bottom here, we've got our identified chemicals. So on the right side, we've got an add chemical option and we can do the search option here. So, you know, whatever we're wanting to enter, we can enter any number of things from this view, X number of chemicals that you're picking. And you can enter confidence levels for each of those uh, chemicals. And then I'd save this. You can also add additional attachments. Um, so that could be, um, again, you've got the data file up here that we can add. Uh, but if you want to add like uh, a few pictures, um, I mean, even from the website, you can add video, you can have PowerPoint, Excel. I mean, you can go nuts pretty much any type of file, standard file type you can add here as an attachment that will be included on the record. Again, I'm going to my side navigation and down here at the bottom of this list, we've got our thresholds. And I'll click thresholds. And again, just like we saw, I've got my two data types uh, for which I can define thresholds for this event. So I'll go into my chemical reading thresholds here. And just like we saw before, again, I've got my four um, sensor types. Um, we're defining thresholds for each of these sensor types on this event. And again, if I am an event manager, I can come into the upper right, I can click edit, uh, and I can change the values to redefine what it means for uh, you know, a hydrogen sulfide uh, reading to, to be low or medium or high, et cetera. You know, if we wanted to, to ratchet this down to 40, instead we can do that to get the idea. Um, the add thresholds button, again, that's right here. And just like we saw before, I could add an ammonia sensor, for example, uh, with whatever unit uh, I want it to, uh, to be for. Um, you can also rename these categories. Uh, we've got a description field here as well. So that's some feedback we've gotten from users. They want to be able to, you know, maybe that event manager wants to provide some insight, some rationale as to why uh, they set the thresholds this way, or they want to provide, uh, uh, they want to reference that maybe some, some reference material that they are drawing from to define these thresholds. Uh, this is just a free text field where you can write in any of those things. All right. And again, our chemical ID thresholds, very similar ID uh, idea here. Uh, again, like we saw before here, we're not adding sensor types, but for this data type, we're just um, adding the, the name of a chemical and we are adding uh, the values for the different thresholds in the same, same fashion. So I'll jump to the map and just show us a couple things here. Again, this is like uh, you saw before on the slide deck. Um, so I'll click on my red record here. So this is one of our chemical reading records that again, our, maybe our responders out there and they're collecting data from the field, from the scene. They submitted this record. So I'm gonna look at the details. I'm gonna say, okay, now why is this colorizing red? What is exceeding that high, uh, very high threshold? So uh, I'm gonna come to my sensor readings here in the, in the 
info box and I'm looking down and it's like, okay, 31% oxygen. So it's an oxygen enriched environment um, and it's exceeding that very high threshold we set for oxygen enriched. So uh, we need to figure out what's going on there. So jumping back to the slides here, uh, again, wanted to say a couple words about our API. So we just finished up a project um, where we wrote these APIs that will allow manufacturers of detection equipment to allow their detection, their, their chemical detection equipment to autonomously communicate with uh, chem responder. So again, those of you who are familiar with rad responder, you know that we've done this for years on the radiological side and we've had a lot of success with that. So we wanted to carry this over into uh, the chem responder service as well. Uh, so we're very excited about it. Again, we just wrapped this project up about a month ago. Um, and uh, the implications here are obviously that users aren't having to hand jam data themselves. Um, and that results in an increase in efficiency. It reduces the risk of manual data entry error. So your data, you know, has a, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be more accurate. These are available for any manufacturer to integrate. So to be clear, um, it's the manufacturer who has to complete basically the other half of the integration. So we stand up our side of this and then they have to write an application that will interface with our APIs. Just a few closing words uh, as we wind this down. Uh, we've got the resource library in Seaburn Responder. So in the upper ribbon bar, you'll see a, a resource uh, tab. Uh, and I will go ahead and add this slide deck to the resource library. Again, we've recorded this webinar, so we're going to upload it to our YouTube page and we'll throw it in our video section on the resource library as well. So you can socialize it with colleagues uh, that may not have been able to attend today or go back and refer to it um, after we part ways.